Live from the Coliseum in Richfield, Ohio, it's International Hockey League action with the Salt Lake Golden Eagles and the Eastern Conference Cleveland Lumberjacks. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Barrack, and welcome to the friendly confines of Richfield Coliseum, where tonight the Golden Eagles, as mentioned for the first time ever, take on the Pittsburgh Penguins' top affiliate, the Cleveland Lumberjacks. Joining me for the broadcast tonight, former Golden Eagle Dave Herakasi, who actually played in this building an exhibition game back with the St. Louis Blues. Boy, in 1975, I had a chance to come here. The building was only one year old, and uh, 19 years later, we're back again <laughs> doing a contest, so it should be fun this evening. Well, the Golden Eagles right now in uh, solid uh, second place in the Pacific Division of the International Hockey League gaining a point against Kansas City Wednesday night. Cleveland in second place, Dave, in their division as well. So two teams real similar as far as the standings are concerned. Both teams definitely fighting for this uh, playoff uh, appearances this season and it's been a struggle for both clubs. Well, the Golden Eagles as mentioned in second place and for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles tonight, a big story. Todd Harkins who grew up here in Cleveland making his uh, debut at the Richfield Coliseum and it should be exciting for Todd. Harkins, a big, tall, rangy forward, uh, has tremendous amount of speed when he gets going down that right wing and uh, very effective this season so far. And for the Cleveland Lumberjacks, Dave McKaylick, seven consecutive 100-point seasons, sixth all-time in scoring in the IHL. McKaylick, known for his offensive abilities, nothing for that man to get 100 points in a season. He does a great job for this uh, Cleveland Lumberjack team. Dave, a key for the game tonight? Well, it's going to have to be done. The Golden Eagles are going to have to play good, solid defensive hockey. That's a necessity on the road, and I'm sure that uh, Phil Russell's Lumberjacks are going to open, to open it up quite a bit and create some problems for the Golden Eagles. Well, we'll see what takes place at Salt Lake and Cleveland for their first ever meeting. We'll have more from the Richfield Coliseum, all the play-by-play -play in just a moment. See, they're, here's the, uh, they're, they're doing this Harkins thing, Pat, right now, just so you know. Organization for four seasons. He then moved on to the Cleveland American Hockey Association and was a member of the first Cleveland Pee Wee team to play in the prestigious the players. Quebec City Quebec Tournament. Tom then played his high school hockey for the Lakewood St. Edward. He also is a co-captain for both the 1985 and 1986 Ohio State champions. Representing North Olmsted is Todd Kripop, who plays for the AA Squirt team, and former teammate Brad Erickson. Representing the Cleveland Americans is Captain Reagan Ferrara of the AA Bantam team, and representing St. Edward is former teammate Troy Gray. The organizations are here to present Todd with mementos of his many in hockey here in this area. Congratulations, Todd. Thank you for many great moments. Great. Okay. <laughs> they got the uh, bench. They got the bench wire. Did you hear that? You can hear Brian up here. Did you hear that? We'd now like to introduce our officials for tonight. Our referees, Mr. Dan That's great. The lines are Mr. Jim Hanford and Mr. Russ Johnson. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, will you please rise as Mr. Claude Scott, the happy trumpeter, will play our so it always is. Okay. Mike Barrick with Dave Herakasi here at the Richfield Coliseum in Cleveland, Ohio. And let's pause for the playing of our national anthem.
different version of our national anthem from Richfield, Ohio. It's the Salt Lake Golden Eagles and the Pittsburgh Penguins top affiliate, the Muskegon Lumberjacks. Let's take a look at the starting goal center tonight for Salt Lake, Trevor Kitty. He's 20 years of age, 27 games, and a mark of 10, 15, and 1, a 3.93 goals against average. And looking uh, for his first victory uh, against the Lumberjacks, of course, in the very first meeting between the two teams. And his opponent tonight is Rob Dobson. He's 25 years of age, was terrific last season against Salt Lake, 17, 8, and 3, a 3.30 goals against, and that is sixth in the IHL in GAA. Hey, let's take a look at the starters tonight. The first for the Golden Eagles and also for the Lumberjacks. Paul Cruz on the wing with the Tim Harris, Sean Hafey up the middle, and as mentioned, the Trevor Kidd in goal with Wortman and Sabrin on defense. Gothi, Dubier, and also McCulloch is the big line for Cleveland. David St. Pierre, Alex Nicolak, Chris Miller, and Thomas Forslund scratched for Sulek. Greg Andrusuk and Jason Smart for the Lumberjacks. It's a Forslund was uh, called up to the current Calgary Flames and will be in action this weekend. The referee tonight is Dan O'Halloran, the linesman Russ Johnson and Jim Hanneberg and we're underway here in Richfield, Ohio. The first ever meeting between the Eagles and the Cleveland Lumberjacks, formerly known as the Muskegon Lumberjacks. And back after Kevin Wortman on the left wing side for Paul Cruz as we're early on here in the first period and Cruz able to swivel into the Cleveland zone. Works in against the defense point, a center one. Now Harris back to the goal for Sully. He is crashed from the boards on left wing and then won by Cleveland all the way down deep into the Sully zone. Sandrin and the forward for the Lumberjacks and that being uh, Justin Duberman after it. Finally it's cleared but not out. Held in the left wing point by Gautier and steered aside. Here's McCulloch trying to set him on guys. They score, and it only takes a total of 46 seconds. Todd Nelson from his left defense position came working inside the blue line, and Dave Parekesi, it's a 1-0 Cleveland lead. Excellent pass by Dave McCulloch, because he just didn't even look, just threw it back into the slot, knowing that Nelson would cruise into the opening. As McCulloch jumps on, on that rebound off the boards, and he just backhands it right out, right between Sean and Hafey's legs, and, and, and Nelson just uh, fires it in right between the legs of Trevor Kidd in goal. Well, Todd Nelson scores the goal, and he is a defenseman. His third goal of the year. Dave McCulloch and also Daniel Gauthier on the assists and a 1-0 Cleveland lead. And again, it takes only 46 seconds here into the first period. The Eagles, who lost in Kansas City Wednesday night, find themselves down here tonight as well. And immediately Sulek cleared into the Cleveland zone. Here's Harkins trying to center one, but the Jacks are able to break it up on right wing. And up the middle it goes for the forward. Harry Gancher is swung off at the last moment by Paul Holden, and here come the Eagles back. Patrick Lebeau, second to the IHL in scoring, the poke check at the defense, and covering up Jamie Heward on left wing. A pass ahead across the line for Sandy Smith, poke check, and cleared by Solek all the way down into the Cleveland zone. Early on, first period, a 1-0 lead in favor of the Lumberjacks. Paul Holden after icing is the call. 133 gone, first period, and already a Cleveland lead of 1-0. Paul Holden, who did not play Wednesday night, back in the lineup for oh, Salt Lake. The Eagles last day, 4-3. Well, actually, it was 5-4 in a in an overtime game Wednesday night against Kansas City. Bob Francis disheartened about that. Well, talking to Bobby a little this morning, uh, very concerned over the officiating in, in Kansas City is a uh, very tough call, very uh, questionable call on, a, on an offside play late in the game that resulted in that winning goal. Faceoff will be deeper to the Cleveland zone. Eagles win the draw. Wortman shoots and a kick saved by Dobson. The rebound cuts in the front as a clock is shot back. Also blocked off the defense. So in a four chance. Cruz after for the Golden Eagles. Juan Frey into center. And the Eagles gain possession. But back of the play, a stop. And Dan O'Halloran, I believe, is going to call a holding penalty. one nothing in favor of Cleveland here early in the first period. And this is So like Golden Eagles hockey. The Marymount Sports Rehab Center helps for all the amateur athletes recover from sports and lifestyle injuries. Call the Marymount Sports and Rehab Center at 663-0080. Elko Furniture is proud to be the official furniture supplier to the Cleveland Lumberjacks players and executives. Buy or lease from Elko Furniture like the pros do. Your home or office will never be the same. Elko Furniture. I want to talk a little bit about both coaches.
Todd Gillingham, two minutes for holding at 149, and Cleveland will go on the power of play. The Jacks rank uh, 11 in the IHL in power play percentage, going 54 for 304, 17%. As Todd Gillingham, two more minutes for him, a total of 192, Dave, this season. Todd Gillingham doing an excellent job in front of the Lumberjack zone, trying to jump on a loose rebound. David Struch, Kerry Clark, really playing very well at this time of the season. Face-off will be into the neutral zone, and Tom Brose to David Struch as the forwards up front to kill it off on defense on the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, Wortman and Stoke. And as mentioned earlier, the Jacks 11th in the league in the power play percentage, and so they've been fairly poor in that. The Eagles penalty killing, pretty good. They've had more power play chances against than any other team in the IHL. And here the Jacks clearing it right back into the Salt Lake zone. It's the Wild free in the center. And uh, Cleveland just cleared right back deep in his Salt Lake territory. The puck is cleared now into the slot. A chance for Cleveland. And the save made by kid on Jason uh, Duberman in front of the goal. Here the Eagles trying to work it free. And finally Stoke able to cue it off the boards all the way down. And Dobson sets it up. So a 1-0 Cleveland lead here in the first period. And the Jacks hold on. They play to Muskegon as the Lumberjacks have moved on this season here to Richfield. Here's the play on left wing, and the Jacks on the attack. Here's Mikhailik, who's already had one point tonight. Into the far side for the uh, forward Duberman along the far side. Trying to center one does, but blocked off at the defense. Mikhailik is still the leading scorer for the Lumberjacks and has had seven consecutive 100-point seasons. And here is Mikhailik at center. Arches into the Salt Lake zone. Trying to drop it free, succeeds to the player cutting in. Uh, Paul Dick trying to dump it in front, and Priestley now back to the goal. Trying to center one, does! And the save by Kidd, and uh, Paul Cruz able to cue it all the way down deep into Cleveland territory. Excellent job once again. Trevor Kidd making the initial save, and the solid Golden Eagle defenseman pounce on that puck and ice it right down. Good job. Here is Jamie Heward on right wing. Heward out of Regina, the Western Hockey League. Skies it right back into the Salt Lake zone. The Eagles clear it away for Tim Harris. Harris just picks an opening, winds but not out. Here is Peter Ahola, able to hold it in, the former Phoenix Roadrunner. Back to the right wing point. Heward a shot, and Kidd steers it aside up. Priestley, his shot, Kidd, a save. Loose in front of the goal. And finally third for Gillingham as the Eagles have killed off the penalty. And here's Sean Hafey to center, skies it right back in. Hafey hot for Salt Lake with a total of the goals and four straight games. The Eagles deep in a four-check Gillingham effort on his knees, then tries to bump down a, a Cleveland player, but the Jacks break back on left wing. And finally, wound free on the opposite side for Sandy Smith, who dumps it right back into the Salt Lake zone. Golden Eagles down 1-0. Here against the Cleveland Lumberjacks in the first meeting this season in a two-line offside from inside the Salt Lake Blue Line to the Cleveland side of center. 15.36 to go in the opening period. 1-0 Lumberjacks. And Kerry uh, Clark uh, having some words with one of the linesmen. And Phil Russell, 40 years of age from Edmonton, Alberta, 15 years in the NHL. Phil Russell, a real steady defenseman for Chicago Blackhawks. I had a chance to play against him back in the mid-'70s. Talked to him a little bit this morning. You know, both uh, Bobby Francis and Phil really haven't played. This is the first time they've met this year, and really both teams suspect because all you're hearing is hearsay how both teams are doing, so it's been tough for the coaches to really set up the strategies. Early on, Cleveland out shooting Salt Lake 5-2, and they have the lead. Now we have a scrap. This is the two most penalized teams in the league, and Kerry Clark flailing away with a player, and now trying to continue to throw some punches as they're right inside the blue line. It's George Zaja Kala for the Lumberjacks and Kerry Clark and the linesman in a separate, so it didn't take too long for the two most penalized teams to go. And actually it was Mark Major for Cleveland right at the blue line. Clark and Major right inside the Salt Lake Blue Five Line. Five each fighting. Five each fighting. Boy, hey, did Kerry did Kerry get him right off the face off David Struch gets the draw back and it goes right there. Both players, Clark and, and Major, just square off a good check. And they decide to go, and I'll tell you, good, good job by Kerry Clark. Five each for fighting as uh, Clark and Major going. Clark uh, for Salt Lake, 175 minutes in penalties coming in. Now has 180 for the Lumberjacks uh, with 1,709 minutes in penalties. They're second in the league to Salt Lake with 1,767. Major, who uh, picks up five, also has 135. Kerry Clark said 
he thought Ian Major would go. He predicted that uh, over the last Very couple of days. Major, big boy, uh, six foot three, over 200 pounds, tough kid, you know. Uh, Kerry Clark, equal to the task. Give him every bit and much more. He leads Salt Lake now with 14 majors on the season. So the teams at even strength uh, with the coincidental major penalties. And here's the play at center, and Salt Lake Stolk trying to hold on to his own blue line. Stolk and Vasquez on defense. Struz, Gillingham, and Chernomaz as the threesome up front. Chernomaz missed six games for Salt Lake with a, a knee sprain, and is back now for Salt Lake. Played Wednesday night in Kansas City. Here is Vasquez now for Salt Lake. Able to Cue it into the corner to the right of the net. Now Salt Lake Struth back of the net for Gillingham. Here's Todd Gillingham front of center one. Blocked off at the last moment and the Jacks hold on. Five minutes gone into the first and here we have another scrap to the right of the goal. It is Gillingham and also Paul Rouse, the leading penalty player for the Jacks. And Rouse falls on top and that sends a rise to the crowd and the linesman in to separate. I'm not sure if he won the scrap day, but with Gillingham falling on the bottom of the pile, the fans enjoying it. one nothing in favor of Cleveland. It's been a physical first period. We'll have more from Richfield Coliseum in just a moment. Five each fighting again. No, I didn't say that, but oh. You should have said, well, how come you didn't say it? I'm not going to say the guy just Well, you got to say he won the fight. He did, I did. Paul Laus, uh, third in the IHL in penalty minutes against Todd Gillingham and David all started back of the net, now to the side of the goal, and uh, they went from there. Well, Gillingham skated in front of the net looking for a return pass from Rich Chernemaz, and he just ran into Laus, and they just squared off. And Laus, a big boy, third in the league with 288 penalty minutes so far. Uh, second round draft pick by the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, and Tough to hit. Todd Gillingham, no uh, stranger to the penalty box. 6'2", 205, 22 years of age at 300 minutes last year. And this season now for Salt Lake is uh, nearing the 200 mark. Here's the play on the far side. So early on, we've had two scraps and a goal. And the only goal scored by Cleveland, but they have another breakdown on the up wing shot. In on goal, and Kip, the save on Kent Priestley, who worked right in on net. And Salt Lake's LeBeau able to cue it outside the blue line and all the way down going to be Cleveland zone. And Peter Ahoa gains possession for Priestley, and he chips it right back at the net. And it is Jamie Heward on the right side. McCarthy steals for Sully. In the deep to fourth check, it's it. Sandy McCarthy it for the Golden Eagles. And uh, finally, it's taken away by Jamie Heward back of the net. Right side for Perry Gancher, cleared but not out. LeBeau keeps the puck in. Back of the goal for Hunkins. He skid it off at the last moment. Todd Harkins in his first game as a professional here in Cleveland, Ohio, where he grew up. Trying to work at Free McCarthy. Battling with him is the Jamie Heward. And finally, the Jacks come up with a puck. 6.08 gone, first period. 1-0 Cleveland. Here's Ganger into the Sully Zone. Centers one, tipped away. On the left wing side, a whole lot of shot. That Jerem's wide, and finally Salt Lake break to center. And here is Big McCarthy able to cue it all the way down, deep into the Jacks end. Good job, Trevor Kidd really giving spearheading this uh, defense uh, play for the Golden Eagles right now. The big key save just a moment ago on the breakaway, and this team will respond. Here's the play now, back of the goal, and Todd Nelson out of Prince Albert of the Western Hockey League. Able to play it for McCulloch as the Jacks wheel out of there. On left wing, it just tipped right back into Salt Lake territory. And Trevor Kidd himself leaves it for Puskas. Back of the net, left wing side for the forward Gillingham. Headman safety, right side for Tim Harris. He is pumped off at the last moment, finally cleared in the center. And the Jacks have to go back. A hard hitting first period here from Richfield, where the Golden Eagles uh, have uh, a game against this Lumberjack team in Cleveland already leading 1-0. Back in his own defense is Trevor Kidd leaves it for Sabrin. McCulloch in the fourth jack. Here's the Jay McCulloch who played in Pittsburgh last year at the tail end of the season when they won their second straight Stanley Cup. Here's David Struch into the uh, Cleveland zone front of Sutherland. Does 
nobody home as Sulik's post was cutting in the slot and finally cleared all the way down deep into the Sulik territory where Kid himself plays up the right side. Mikhailik steals. Trying to hold on. Here's Dave Mikhailik at 30 years of age. Trying to work it free, but poke check by Struch and he clears to center. 1 0 Cleveland. 12 15 to go in the opening period. And the Jacks clear it to the Salt Lake defense where Chernamaz able to wheel out of it. Left wing side for Brost, in across the line. Chernamaz in on that, shoots, and that's blocked off after the defense. Chernamaz trying to work it free. They fight for it to the right of the goal, and finally it squirts free, and the Jacks hold on. Here is the Eagles McCarthy in a fourth check, but the Jacks clear it right back in at Patterson, a rookie out of the Western Hockey League. Eagles to still give it a play along the boards. They still fight for it ferociously. And finally, it's cleared back of the goal. Sasha Kala on the right wing, checked and so like break back. Here is the Eagles McCarthy able to flip it right back in. And early on here, a fast pace to opening current. The Eagles down by one. Here's Wortman. Shovels behind the net for the Eagles. Harkins, he's unable to gain possession. They scramble for it, and finally, Cleveland come up with it. Ken Priestley, a fifth round Buffalo pick in 1985, taking advantage, and uh, Dave uh, Trevor Kidd says no. So Priestley picks up a loose puck through the neutral zone, skates in. Excellent move by Trevor Kidd as he baits Priestley to go back to the opposite way, just leans over with the block and makes the nice save. 1 0 in favor of Cleveland, but Trevor Kidd with a spectacular stop to keep it a one goal game. Kidd made 23 saves this past Saturday night in his 6-4 win against the Peoria Riverland. Here's the play in front of the goal, but the Eagles clear it away for Cruz on the wing. Paul Cruz, who played 13 games in Calgary this season, unable to gain possession. They fight for it now back of the net. Harris trying to make a play, and Gauthier shoots it. Kid gets a piece of that. Boy, Gauthier has had some terrific numbers two years ago and uh, over 100 points in the East Coast Hockey League. Eagles break back, Harris on left wing. In across the Jacks line, trying to work it free, but Kochek at the last moment. Now it is uh, Sean Hafey, back of the net, cuts in front. His shot off is sticking up into the stands as the Eagles uh, bidding to tie the game on a good opportunity in front of the Cleveland goal. And uh, Dave, uh, they uh, have hockey back here in Cleveland, Ohio. They've had a story in hockey history in uh, this city as the Jacks go to get a good chance from the side of the net. Daniel Goji had taken that shot and uh, good good for uh, Trevor Kidd was that Kidd stayed kind of close to the uh, pipe and never pulled away. That way he was able to smother it and didn't go in on the short side. 28 goals for Daniel Gauthier and a couple of years ago Gauthier was just terrific. He had a total of 134 points with the Knoxville Cherokees the East Coast Hockey League and finally Pittsburgh which had drafted him giving him an opportunity last year in their uh, AAA Muskegon franchise. Face off coming up uh, deep into the Cleveland zone and Dave with uh, the history here in this building. The old Cleveland Barons of the American Hockey League, that's where they had most of their hockey played in the city. Cleveland Barons uh, did very well here in the National Hockey League as you mentioned and now it sounds like hockey's gonna be leaving this, this fine arena. Yeah, in a couple of years they have a new building in the downtown area which uh, they will move to eventually. They had the Cleveland Barons of the NHL, and their minor league team, the Barons of the American Hockey League, were terrific. In fact, won nine Calder Cups in the American Hockey League. Eagles control on the wing, and Struve able to bounce it off the boards to center. And Cleveland trying to clear it right back free, but the Eagles break back. Here's Chernamaz for Struve, and he floats it right back into the Jacks end, and the defenseman, uh, Dick, able to gain possession. So like the Steelers, Struve down to the side of the goal for Chernamaz, trying to center one, but cleared away by Dick on the opposite side. And the Eagles down by one in deep to fourth check. Chernamaz back to the right wing point for Brose, but offside. With 9.07 to go in the first, the Eagles have been badly outshot, but trail only by one at one to nothing. Bob Francis in his fourth year as head coach for the Salt Lake Golden Eagles had a chance to talk last night with Joe Mullen of the Pittsburgh Penguins, Dave, and they played hockey against each other in the old Hell's Kitchen area in New York City. Well, as you mentioned, uh, our conversation with Joey, uh, he asked how everybody was doing in Salt Lake, uh, Lenny Frick and Bobby, uh, you know, just to see how everybody was doing. And he, had, he said he loved the fans in Salt Lake City. He thought they were some of the greatest fans in all hockey. They played together in New York City. Uh, Joe's dad was the 
Zamboni driver, Joey Mullins in New York with the Rangers, and Bob's dad, Abel, was coach and general manager at the New York Rangers. Here's the play at center, and the puck is loose. Into the center ice here, and a break now for Priestley. In across the line, centers Gantra shot. That ricochets wide. And the Eagles gain possession. Sabrin on the right wing side. Headmans for McCarthy. In the center, and McCarthy just fl flings it to the blue line, but blocked away at the defense. And right now, Dave, not much offense for Salt Lake into the Muskegon zone. Lumberjack's doing a great job. The defenseman standing up and forwards, creating a lot of opportunities. Good forechecking. Uh, causing all kind of problems for the Golden Eagles. Out of the goal, kid himself to play it up the left wing side. Gillingham also there, and finally it is kid on the right side, able to play it free for Sandy McCarthy. Up the middle for Todd Harkins, and the native here of uh, in this city of Cleveland, able to clear it free to center for Harris, but a two line offside from inside the Salt Lake blue line to the Cleveland side of center. One nothing in favor of the Cleveland Lumberjacks here in the first period. And we'll have more Eagles hockey in just a moment. Lumberjacks in action again tomorrow night at 7 30 against Indianapolis. And then the Salt Lake City team will return on Tuesday, March 9th. So this Monday on February 22nd, the NHL debuts in Cleveland with Philadelphia and Detroit. The NHL back in Cleveland yep. with Philadelphia and Detroit, Monday night at 7.30. All 17 conveniently located Conrad's Auto Service location. 8-10 to go in the well, first period. Mike Barrick alongside Dave Herakasi, uh, Todd Nelson, and 46 seconds into the opening period, and that's been it on the scoreboard. The Jacks have a one nothing lead. The very first meeting between these two teams. And the Eagles trying to clear it free and wound right back to the Salt Lake defense where Rod Buskis gains possession. 32-year-old Buskis with the defenseman stole. Headman's cruise into the neutral zone. For Sean Hafey, and he backs it right back in. Hafey has goals in five of his last six games. Here's the play now back of the goal. Cruise for Salt Lake trying to center one. And finally, it's a yank free on left wing where McKaylick comes up with the puck. His pass cleared away by Stoll, who backpedals at his own defense, and then uh, able to play it outside the blue line in the center. one nothing Cleveland here in the first period. Shots of goal 10-2 in favor of the Lumberjacks. The Eagles have not peppered Rob Dobson as they freeze it up into the neutral zone. Here in the first period, as mentioned, Cleveland out shooting Selig badly here in the early going. The Lumberjacks are coached by Phil Russell, seventh in the league in offense, sixth in defense, and they are over the 500 mark at 26, 23, and four. And Russell took over last year, Dave, from Blair McDonald, who had coached the Muskegon Lumberjacks. And as you mentioned, a, a stellar career in the National Hockey League. He owned a bar in Chicago, Dave. Did you ever frequent that? I did. Uh, he talked a little bit about it. He's, he's glad he's out of that business. He's happy that he's back in, in hockey and working with the young kids. and. Uh, and doing a good job with the Pittsburgh Penguin affiliate. And he uh, wanted to get back into the game of hockey, and he ended up playing a few games a few years ago with Kalamazoo, and now is full-time head coach here in Cleveland. Eagles break back on left wing, and Rich Chernomass cuts in front of center one. Rock off at the last moment by Peter Ahola in the center. Right side pass across the line. Kid the save on Sandy Smith, breaking down into the Salt Lake zone. And again, Trevor Kidd tested into the Salt Lake goal crease uh, as the Jacks had another good scoring chance as Smith down the right side. But Perry, Perry Cancha with a real nice save up front and uh, Sandy Smith lets go of the shot, tries to go to the long side and only the blocker of Trevor Kidd prevents the shot. Good Trev shot right at the top of that circle. He lets that blast go and Trevor Kidd was able to get that blocker on it. Trevor Kidd, 888 save percentage, and uh, tonight, as mentioned, 11 shots, and he's made 10 saves. He has uh, been coming on of late. He's won six of his last 10. He's gone 9, 8, and 1 in his last 18, and that in consideration of his start of 1 and 7 to start the year. So he's really been coming on in goal of late. Here the Jacks trying to clear it right back deep into the Salt Lake zone, and the 20-year-old from Dugal, Manitoba, able to leave it for his own defense. And Sanford able to gain possession back of his net. So one nothing in favor of the Lumberjacks. Bob Francis said the Eagles need to do a better job of clearing the puck out of their own end. And Kieran Clark's able to do that as he clears it right back behind the Lumberjacks goal. Here's Struchin after it, but finally it's cleared by Laus on the left wing side to the blue line. Buskis after it also trying to freeze it there. 
And finally, it squirts the center where the former Washington capital, Ken Sabrin, bangs it in. Salt Lake change on the fly. It is a new line out for Salt Lake now with Todd Harkins and Patrick LeBeau, and they cleared up into the stands with 6.02 to go in the first. one nothing in favor of the Lumberjacks. Bob Francis uh, feeling, uh, Dave, too many turnovers in the game Wednesday night in Kansas City. Well, it's evident uh, tonight again that the Golden Eagles are coughing up the puck in the neutral zone, enabling uh, Muskie, or, uh, Cleveland excuse me, to come right back at them and get those good opportunities. 1-0 Lumberjacks, Todd Nelson's third of the year. The only goal so far. And it will be Harkins to draw for Salt Lake. Harkins, when he was seven years of age, skated during the intermission of a Cleveland Crusaders game. Believe it or not, they played back in the old World Hockey Association as they freeze it now. Back of the goal, and finally LeBeau, trying to center one, does. And Dobson able to fall on top, loose in the goal crease. LeBeau a chance. That's blocked away also. Harkins hauls down a Lumberjack player, and although McCarthy takes his shot, Dan O'Halloran in his fourth year as a referee is going to call a holding penalty, I believe, in front of the net. one nothing, Cleveland here in the first period. We'll have more between the Eagles and the Lumberjacks in just a moment. Upcoming promotions that will replace Stephen Tuttle plays at WKNR. We'll be giving the first 3,000 fans a free Lumberjacks player card set. Tickets can be purchased tonight at the Coliseum box office during the first and second admission. NHL regular season hockey at the Coliseum with the Detroit Red Wings versus the Philadelphia Flyers. Tickets can be purchased tonight at the Coliseum box office during the first and second intermission. And on March 12th, the Lumberjacks would like to welcome back to the Coliseum Gordy Howe for his 65th birthday tour. Also, after the game, the, the Cleveland Lumberjacks leading 1-0 to the Salt Lake Golden Eagles all over to the Muskegon zone, or to the Cleveland zone, I should say, but Todd Harkins commits the foul in front of the net. Well, Patrick LeBeau was stationed right behind the net, trying to get a puck out in front to Harkins. Harkins a little frustrated. They couldn't get the stick on it to shoot it into the net. And he ended up just going out to the top of the face-off circle and pulling down Sandy Smith. So as a result, the Jacks in their second power play, they are 0 for 1 so far in this game. However, they scored an even strength goal and have a 1-0 advantage. Tom Crows, Bob Francis Fields, may be the, the best penalty killer in the IHL. And he's paired with David Struish, who scored a shorthanded goal so in Kansas City Wednesday night. Here's the play now, back to the goal. Kid himself plays it outside the blue line, and Kid acts as a defenseman to do it himself. Trevor Kidd, one of the better goaltenders in this league of controlling the puck with his stick. He adds that extra thing to your team with that uh, uh, puck handling ability. Here's the play now back of the goal and Ahola holds on. He is uh, from Espoo, Finland. Plays it up the middle for Perry Gancher and cleared by Sabrin right back in. And the Eagles change defensively on the penalty kill. Well, goaltending uh, goal coach Glenn Hall mentioned today he's very happy the way Trevor Kidd handles that puck. Here is the Paul Decker shot. That deflects wide. Eagles trying to clear it free, but not out. Held in by Hewitt. Centers in front. Oh, and the one-timer deflected wide. Center Gancher missed the target. Boy, Perry Gancher, who played one game back in the early 80s with Salt Lake, missed the target. Now the veteran Gancher, right wing point pass as the Jack trying to work it free, but Sabrin takes over, clears it outside the line, and all the way down. Zero for one so far this evening, the Lumberjacks. Uh, Golden Eagles doing an excellent job of penalty killing. And also getting a break as Gancher was alone in front, shot the puck wide on a good scoring chance, and Darren Stoke able to clear it to center. Stoke was originally drafted by the Pittsburgh Penguins and began his professional career with the Muskegon Lumberjacks, so actually facing the organization that drafted him. Here's the play on the far side of the puck loose for the forward Duberman at his own defense, and he drops it free. So Cleveland already leading 1-0, having another 14 seconds on this uh, power play on the left wing side. Drop pass, but Rich Chernomaz able to leave it to center, and the Jacks have to go back, and they just clear it free on the left wing side. So the Eagles down here, no, but the Jacks uh, unable to score in the power play, and Hawkins is back on as they clear it ahead from McCrylick offside. So the Eagles kill it off. Eagles, as I mentioned, doing a fine job of killing penalties. Uh, Bobby Francis, before tonight's game, concerned. Well, we want to mention uh, this Friday night, next Friday night, I should say, the Cleveland Lumberjacks return to the Delta Center to take on the Golden Eagles. It will be First Security Team Poster Night. Team posters will be handed out at the door, courtesy of First Security Bank. So that will be next Friday, Thursday and Friday day, the Eagles take on this same Cleveland team.
Excellent chance for the fans of Salt Lake to see this Lumberjack club that they remember from years past. Good rivalry between the old Muskegon team and Salt Lake. Yeah, in 88-89, the, the Jacks won a Turner Cup at the Delta Center. Eagles won a Turner Cup with Bob Francis as a player against the Jacks in 1986-87 with Wayne Thomas behind the bench. Here's Clark shoots and a stick save made by Dobson. And that's a, a good opportunity for Salt Lake's Clark and finally cleared in the center. So the Eagles, Kevin Wortman gains possession. Last year's American-born Rookie of the Year, Wortman. On the right side for Clark, he clears to center. Blocked away at the defensive wall, right back down where Clark has to twirl back, and he just picks an opening, clears it off the far side and up into the Cleveland players' bench with a total of 254 left in the first period. Kerry Clark growing that uh, beard. He said it's going to be an ugly beard because it's way early for playoffs. And Kerry Clark uh, has a uh, little red nose there, maybe from that uh, scrap earlier. That was an excellent scrap between Kerry and the big uh, Mark Major for the Lumberjacks. Uh, they went at it. Kerry, I think, got the best of that one. Well, you saw the blood coming down from Kerry's nose, and I think that was actually the blood from Major from that scrap. Well, both of them, because Major seemed to be spitting something out of his mouth, so that, unless those were the ivories that left. I'm not sure. I don't believe, though, that he has a bloody nose uh, on his own. Here's the play on right wing, and the bow hands it for Buskis at center, and he spins it right back into the Cleveland zone with two and a half minutes to go in the first period. 12-5, Lumberjacks out shooting so late. And now the play at center, and across the line, Ahoa in on goal, but Buskis stays with him. The play to the far corner, so late clear, but not out. Laos shoots one right to the goal crease, and nobody home. Finally, it's a wound down to the corner to the left of the Salt Lake goal, and finally Paul Holden able to fly it all the way down deep into Cleveland territory. Critical for the Golden Eagles defense not to give away that puck. They've got to keep that puck out of the middle of the ice, throw it up on the boards, get it out of your own zone. And Sandy Smith whirls back at his own defense out of Minnesota Duluth. Able to play it for Daniel Gauthier in the center. Paul Cruz all over him, and the Eagles come up with a puck. Uh, Sean Hafey. In the center, and he flips it right back in. Hafey approaching the 20-goal campaign. He has 19 coming in. Here's Wortman trying to center one. Flag down at the defense, and the Jacks just play at the center with a minute 40 to go. First period, 1-0 Cleveland. And Sabrin on the left wing side. Trying to play it for Cruz. They fight for it to the left of the net. They try and center one. Cruz after it, cleared, but not out. Nelson able to keep the puck deep. Behind the net for the forward McCullough. Get on goal, left wing side pass across to the far wing for Quinn. Centers the score. And I believe it was Daniel Gauthier in front of a pass from Quinn and Trevor Kidd furious on that play in front of the net. Trevor Kidd feeling as if uh, Gauthier initially was stuck in the crease and then floated back out. And it looked like McCullough may have been frozen in real tight on Kidd also. Well, the goal appears to have counted here at a 2 0 Jacks lead. Bob Francis was upset about an offside call Wednesday night in Kansas City, Dave. And it's here's still the play now to the left wing side. It all started in front, and Kidd appeared to have been knocked down right before that shot was taken. His definitely his legs were pulled out uh, underneath uh, in front of Trevor. Trevor trying to get over, and that's what's made Trevor so uh, irritated about the, the goal being scored. Well, we'll take another look. The original pass was uh, from David Quinn. Quinn spots Gochi in front of the goal, but earlier you could see the player, I believe, Justin, Justin Duberman, right in Duberman. front of the goal, causing havoc with the Eagles kid. And uh, Dan O'Halloran right now discussing things with his linesman, uh, Dave, on that play. Maybe they uh, should take a look at our replay. 28, Gochi on that. the goal. I got a 10-minute misconduct on the goaltender kid. Trevor Kidd uh, being victimized on a play where Duberman, there was no question, pulled uh, Trevor's legs out from underneath him. Now we have further discussions along the far side, and Paul Cruz and the player David Quinn trying to have some uh, discussions there, and here we go. David Quinn and Paul Cruz going at it. Boy, we've had a little bit of everything here as Cruz trying to throw a couple of right hands. The linesman letting them go to it. Cruz throwing some ups. Quinn trying to fight back. And David Quinn, who has not played hockey during the past four seasons, coming back this year. And uh, Paul Cruz still waltzing uh, inside the blue one. Actually, Quinn came back briefly last season to play with Team USA. And 
Bingham to briefly in Binghamton in the American Hockey League as Cruz trying to throw some punches and the linesman in a separate. It all started as a discussion and has gone on day from there. Well, it just started right after the misconduct penalty was called. Paul Cruz came off the bench, started jawing with, uh, with young David Quinn and uh, all, they let him go at it. Well, we've already had three scraps, Dave, in the first period. No surprise because okay, these teams right one, two. I gotta ask you another thing. You gotta in, call upstairs uh, and minutes. tell me who was on the, on the ice for the last shift. So they're now discussing things. Dan O'Halloran to the near side, and I think the reason that O'Halloran is coming over is because somebody has to serve the timid of his conduct, uh, which was assessed to Kidd after that goal by Gauthier at 18.42. He may be also questioning if Paul Cruz came off the bench to get into that altercation, which then would uh, cause uh, O'Halloran to call the penalty. Well, that last uh, scoring play was Gauthier, his 29th of the season. Quinn on an assist for Both the teams. Lumberjacks and also Dave Just McCullough. All I want to know is if those two guys and, were on that last uh, shift. Uh, fans getting a good uh, uh, opportunity to hear Dan, Dan O'Halloran's discussion right with now. the off-ice officials. Dan o Dave O'Halloran saying, were those, both those players on the ice? Both Quinn and uh, Paul Cruz. Okay, they get five minutes for fighting and ten-minute misconducts. So oh, there you hear the penalties. Uh, Cruz yep. for Salt Lake and the uh, forward David Quinn for the Lumberjacks, but to Trevor Kidd, a very disconsolate in goal about that particular play, and also by the fact that it's a late goal by Salt Cleveland Lake. for this 2 nothing lead. Trevor Kidd been, has played very, very well in this period, and then for something like that to happen, uh, Duberman completely taking out his legs from underneath him and not enabling Trevor to get back. Well, they're announcing the attempt of misconduct against Kidd, which will have to be served by another Salt Lake player, plus the penalties, Cruz and Quinn, five each for fighting, and attempt of misconduct, and Bob Francis, uh, Dave, uh, trying to sort out the line possibilities now with all the players right now uh, being uh, tossed to right and left. When I mentioned earlier about the strategies being set by Phil Russell and uh, Bobby Francis, it's evident that Bobby Francis' strategy was to come out and play aggressive, and we can take another uh, look at that last scoring play for our Gauthier, Gauthier. The puck was taken to the left of the goal by McCulloch. He eventually spots Quinn. But all the action coming, Dave, in front of the goal as Quinn took the shot. Kid was way out to make the play. And then right in front. Oh, yeah. The forward Duberman got his stick underneath the skate of Kidd, and that's when he fell down to the ice. It was very clear, again, as we watch this videotape replay, that his legs were pulled out by Duberman, and, and that's why he's so, uh, as you mentioned, disconsolate about the call. Well, the goal stands. Dan O'Halloran in his fourth year. He's actually now, for the first season, under contract to the National Hockey League. Bob Francis is not... I'm sure too happy about that. And a 2 nothing Lumberjacks lead. And now they're on the attack again. And the native of uh, New Haven, Connecticut, grew up in Chicago. Duberman trying to work it free. And the rookie oh, trying to maneuver free to the left of the goal. And with under a minute to go in the period. And Solex Holden takes on. So a wild first period with a ton of penalties. Three majors. And a misconduct now called against Trevor Kidd. And the puck loose at center, and Salt Lake throws into the neutral zone. He able to play it right side for Buskett. Into the Cleveland zone, and he cues it off the glass. Right back into the Lumberjack territory, territory I should say. And Holden trying to make a play, but cleared by Cleveland into the neutral zone. Muskegon doing, I mean, Cleveland, excuse me, again, doing a great job of uh, neutralizing any plays that the Golden Eagles are trying to set up. And Brost able to flow, uh, flow it to free for LeBeau. Poke check, and then cleared for Duberman. On the right side, able to muscle it free for Gauthier. Long shot, kid. A glove save, and he holds on with only 12 seconds to go in the first. Two to nothing in favor of Cleveland. He hails from a town of under 500 people, Dave, in Dugald, Manitoba. He actually played goal with his dad, his uh, younger sister and brother, and they had a, a built uh, in rink in. Uh, in the backyard uh, for Trevor Kidd growing up, uh, he started playing goal. He said he played one game as a forward when he was three or four years old, and then he played one game in goal, and from there on has been a net minded. Trevor Kidd, uh, Dougal, Manitoba, as you mentioned, very small community, about 40 miles from where I'm from in Winnipeg. Uh, know the place very well. Uh. 
Faceoff will be into the Salt Lake zone to the left of the kid. Trevor Kidd to the near side, and now Cleveland trying to make a play. They quickly center one, but Salt Lake Sabrin holds on. Five seconds to go in the period. Shoots it all the way deep into the Cleveland zone with just a second left in the period. And are we going to have another one? It is Gantry and Sabrin having some words here in the opening period. And uh, Dave, we've had three scraps and a total now of three 10 minute misconducts. Golden Eagles playing very, very aggressive, and they've just taken it right at the Lumberjacks. It's worked so far in the Lumberjacks' favors as they have this two goal lead just about at the end of the first period. Ken Sabrin and Perry Gancher. Two minute minors for roughing, uh, 19 minutes and 59 seconds, so they will serve the bulk of the minutes of those penalties at the start of the second period. And a lot of activity here in. Cleveland as the Lumberjacks have the 2-0 lead. A lot of fireworks here tonight. And we still have two more periods of action here as the Eagles win the draw, and that's it. The buzzer sounds. Eagles down 2-0, but a late controversial goal, Dave, has given the Cleveland team a two-goal lead. A lot of times you wish for instant replay, and that's a situation that it would have been in the Eagles' benefit, uh, the Eagles' favor for Trevor Kidd as his legs were pulled out from underneath him. Eagles just not being able to get anything going offensively. Good job by the Lumberjacks, uh, neutralizing anything positive for the Golden Eagles. A total of 68 minutes in penalties called by Dan O'Halloran in the first period. The Golden Eagles playing very aggressive, as I mentioned, and uh, they've made a lot of checks, but they haven't made them all the real good checks, and uh, he's had the uh, Halloran had to whistle off a lot of infractions. Okay, that's the story here. Two to nothing, Cleveland over Salt Lake. We'll have more from the Richfield Coliseum in just a moment. Play the second goal. Uh, can, we, can you cue the replay the second goal up? Yeah. No, I'm during this interview down here, can you replay that uh, second goal? I'll ask him about it. Thank you. I think I'm just throwing it down right now. You're not going to be able to no. I can hear you fine. In uh, Cleveland, Ohio, the Golden Eagles uh, trailing the Cleveland Lumberjacks by a score of 2 to nothing. Well, uh, that's the story, a controversial late goal, and Dan Savick, who has joined us on the broadcast tonight, has the coach of the Golden Eagles, Bob Francis. Mike, thank you very much, Bob Francis. A very controversial second goal was Trevor Kidd interfered with. Well, believe it or not, they're showing the replay on, on the scoreboard, which kind of surprised me, and they showed it three times, and uh, Perry Gancher seemed to be uh, in Trevor's way. The play came across. Trevor was outside of his crease challenging uh, Quinn from the point position. They threw it across. Trevor was trying to come over, and uh, Gancher clearly pulled him down, and as a result, they scored an empty net goal, and on top of that, now Trevor got a 10-minute misconduct, so we have to get our composure back, uh, get our focus back, and come out for the second period. We'll take a look at the interference right now. You talked to the referee after he came off the ice what did you tell him and what did he say to you well I asked him his viewpoint on the play and he, he mentioned that he didn't see the uh, infraction uh, and they did call up above and the people up above uh, suggested that Trevor wasn't interfered with but uh, as Trevor came across Gantcher pulled his inside leg and uh, as a result he lost his balance and uh, they had an empty net goal Bobby it's been a very very physical physical hockey game we saw a scrap breakout after this one here as we take another look at the controversial second goal which gave the Jacks a 2-0 lead do you 
anticipate this game to be physical the rest of the way out? Well, uh, both teams are physical, and uh, we have to expect that, but we have to initiate and get away from the retaliation part of it, and uh, we have to be disciplined in the penalty department and, uh, and not get frustrated, and I think uh, we lost our composure that first period. We are a physical team, as is uh, Muskegon, and so we have to be controlled in that area. Cleveland had a lot of good quality opportunities, a lot of shots in tight, a couple two-on-ones, a couple breakaways. Is that something you're going to talk to the club about in the locker room during the intermission? Yeah, first of all, uh, coming off our game in Kansas City, we have to improve our play uh, with the puck in our zone. The first goal resulted from a turnover. Muskegon is flying people through the neutral zone behind our defense, and our defense have to have their head on a swivel and be aware of what's behind them, as well as we have to get the puck deep and not turn it over their blue line because they are a quick transition team, and they're getting us on a transition. So we have to improve in those three areas. Turnover is a big concern for you tonight? Turnover is always a concern for me and uh, particularly against Muskegon. They, they like the transition game and uh, if we want to control the play territorially we have to get it deep with a third man high and watch what's behind us. Would you anticipate anything different than what we saw in the first period for the next 40 minutes of this hockey game? No, I think it's going to be physical, but I think there's going to be less penalties. Uh, we have to keep our, our focus in that department. And uh, We mentioned before the game we want to allow squirm in the penalty department and we haven't done that so far, so we have to improve in that area. Bob Francis, the coach of the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, after 20 minutes of play, it's 2-0 in favor of the Cleveland Lumberjacks. Let's toss it back upstairs to Mike Barrick. Okay, the uh, score here, 2 to nothing in favor of the Cleveland Jump Lumberjacks. We'll have more from Richfield in just a moment. All right, number one, here's your goal. I'm going to go uh, to the Harkins piece, right? Do you want to just do you want to just go do you want to just lead to it then? Okay. Number 3. Right. Number 3 is Lee. Here she comes. Look at that one. All right. Woo! Thank you. Hey, do me a favor, guys. Wave your 3. Go ahead. We will. Just cross it up and over. Just flip it over after the segment's over. That way I'll flip see. what over? Your eye of this. So right. I should Number put it on the left? You're done? Number four oh, okay. is four. Do the goal hooker. Okay. Um, can you fill that up? Can somebody fill that up with water for me? That's all I'm there. Yeah, she's right. Okay. Okay. We, we don't Number have... five. Okay, I'm going to listen to it. Number five is Donna. Until we get finished with this first. Can you stand up here? I don't even have to. They're just going to go right to you. Let's see what I have. Number five is Number five is done. Cheats. So you'll be standing like uh, up right here. Let Pat know that the uh, to try not to show the bikini night stuff. All right, number six. Problems in Salt Lake. Michelle. Okay. Here she goes. Number six. How come I, I haven't got this thing in right? Plug this earphone. this earphone in for me so I can listen. I can't get this thing in. Right. Should be in there now. Is it? Yeah. Dave. Number seven, Renee. Number seven is. We're at the Richfield Coliseum just outside Cleveland, Ohio, as the Golden Eagles continue to take on the Cleveland Lumberjacks. Joining me is a gentleman that had some tremendous success here in this city as the Golden Eagles uh, take on the Lumberjacks for the first time ever. And Todd Harkins makes his first visit back to his hometown. Todd, uh, I know it has to be very exciting for you. What's uh, going through your mind as the Golden Eagles take on Cleveland here tonight? Oh, I can't really describe it right now, Mike. It's unbelievable um, the, the welcome I've got since I've come back here. You know, I was kind of kind of thinking this was going to be an embarrassing moment for me to come back and play in Cleveland uh, in the minor leagues but uh, you know it's 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 been it's been great you know people have been great they've been treating me great um, you know I have to be proud of what I've accomplished so far and I think I've 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 seen that and the way people have been greeting me since I've been back here and uh, you know it's been great to come back here and play and I think tonight's going to be an unbelievable game not just for me but for the fans and for everybody in this whole situation. <laughs> 
Well, uh, how many people are going to be coming, uh, rooting you on here tonight? I'd say there's probably between 20 and 25 people. Um, all day long, I was getting phone calls in my hotel room. I finally had to put a, a no ring on the phone and say, hey, relax. You know, I got to get some sleep today. I got a game to play. But uh, I'd say there's probably uh, 20 to 25. There'll probably be more coming out of the woodwork as the, as the day goes on here and uh, get closer to the game time. But it's unbelievable. It's just great. Let's talk a little bit about your high school career. You played at St. Edwards High School here in Cleveland, and tell us a little bit about it and about your uh, career uh, here in uh, the city of Cleveland. Well, I grew up um, playing minor hockey here, basically uh, um, playing for North Olmsted, and then I went on to uh, play for the Cleveland Americans, which basically was an all-star team at that time, and we played a lot of hockey out of Detroit and Toronto and Buffalo. So it was good to get experience playing against you know, guys that were so much better than us and uh, luckily right now I've caught up to them but uh, it was a great experience and basically I went to St. Edward High School because of uh, it was the only hockey high school that I could go to because of where I lived we didn't have high school hockey so I had to go away to the all boys Catholic school and play high school hockey there and um, luckily uh, we had a great coach come in there while I was there Bob Whitten um, came at my sophomore year, and uh, that year we won our first state championship. And then the following year we won back-to-back -back state championships my junior year, and it was probably the t two most rem memorable things that I'll always remember about my hockey career. Um, it was just a great experience and a great, great, great place to play high school hockey. And then you went on and uh, had uh, some hockey uh, experience at uh, Miami of Ohio, so uh, some uh, some excitement there also in uh, in Oxford for your career there. Yeah, you know, it, it was great to get a scholarship offer back in Ohio. Um, it was either going to be Bowling Green, Ohio State, or, or Miami. I think I wanted to stay in the state of Ohio because I did grow up playing hockey here. Um, I chose Miami um, for many different reasons, but it was, you know, luckily my career is shaped up the way it has, and they, I got drafted by Calgary f by going to Miami and then having a, a great junior year down there. Uh, so that that caused the Calgary Flames to sign me a year early and bring me out of school or before my senior year, which now here I am playing minor hockey um, in, in the in the Calgary Flames organization. Well, only two players, I understand, that were born and bred in Cleveland. Doug Vollmer, who played in the late 60s and early 70s, and Todd Harkins, under two born and bred Cleveland natives to go on to the NHL. Yeah, you know, <laughs> what an instinction, you know. It's just gr it's a great feeling, you know. I don't think of it that way. I think of it as um, if you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. Um, it's, just, it's the same thing in anything you do in life, and I think um, hockey was just the road that I chose and I think my will to win and my will to become the best that I can be has gotten me this far, and I think hopefully in the future it will keep me in the NHL. All right, Todd, best of luck uh, tonight, and uh, I know uh, the fans here in Cleveland will be rooting for you. Thank you very much, Mike. Todd Harkins of the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. He returns home tonight to take on the Cleveland Lumberjacks. We'll have more hockey coming up, the Eagles and Cleveland, here at Richfield Coliseum in just a moment. Is this fine the way we are standing right here? Okay. For the first time. Yeah, right, right. She's tough, man. She is. All right. You, would you want us to stand even? Uh, Number four. No. Yeah. yeah. How's that? Is that better? Okay, move on, move on. Well, if I stand oh, yeah, up. There, there you go, that's perfect. Yeah, size now, you look, now you look about the same yeah, size. Yeah, that's good. Boy, this is, this is like this great. Is like the, the oh, we've got to be able to see this. I know it has to. There you go. Oh, uh, poor crowd. For, huh? Poor crowd. Now, nice since thing. I'm ahead of you here, um, I my make sure that you know, when you look at the camera, it's awkward for me. Can you move? I don't know if you can move. I guess you can't at all. It's kind of awkward. Look at me for the most part. And then when you look at the camera, I'll kind of look at the camera and look back at you. Okay. Set me up with some good questions. It doesn't get much easier either. He's just going to talk to us about that. All right, now, we really need your support now, and they do. 
We're gonna name one at least the Harkins thing the first, and then the other Harkins when they showed him before the game. The second place and the third place. And I tell you what, my walk. Any of them will win by night, any night. Welcome back to the Richfield Coliseum here just outside Cleveland, Ohio. It's 2 to nothing in favor of the Cleveland Lumberjacks over the Salt Lake Golden Eagles. I'm Mike Barrack alongside Dave Herakasi. Uh, Dave, a, a tough one for Salt Lake. Uh, the last goal was uh, fairly controversial and it gave uh, Cleveland a 2 nothing lead. Well, you know, Bobby Francis, uh, I'm sure, uh, likes the aggressive style of play, but the Golden Eagles, I think, are getting, a, at this point, a little carried away with it. And they and they got to come back now and, uh, and uh, settle down, get their composure back, and start to play good fundamental hockey. Well, earlier we showed you the piece on Todd Harkins and the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, and before the game here tonight at the Richfield Coliseum, they had a chance to take a look at Todd Harkins, and the fans had a chance to... Uh, celebrate his uh, tremendous success here in the city of Cleveland, uh, growing up playing high school hockey here and playing college hockey at Miami of Ohio, and he had some of the representatives from uh, his high school uh, team uh, here at St. Edwards High School, where they won two state uh, high school championships, and also at St. Anselm uh, as well here in the city of Cleveland, went on as mentioned and uh, played college hockey at Miami of Ohio. So they presented him a couple of plaques. They also actually very soon will be retiring his number nine from high school, uh, Dave, and they hope to retire that and present him with that later in the season here in Cleveland. It's a very nice tribute to uh, Todd Harkins, and uh, Todd's got a great future ahead of him. Uh, I'm sure uh, he's going to get another opportunity up with Calgary, and he's he's taken every opportunity that he's had to go up there, and hopefully he can stay. Well, the Golden Eagles outshot in the first period, Dave, and uh, Cleveland scoring two goals. What's uh, going to be different for Salt Lake if they need to turn things around? Well, you know, the Golden Eagles, as I mentioned earlier, got to play you know, a good, solid defensive game. Early on here, they've given the puck away a few times in their own zone, and with the offensive abilities, the McKaylucks, the Ganchers, they take opportunity when they get the chance, and they jump right on it and capitalize. Well, that's the story here in Richfield. The Golden Eagles are trailing the Lumberjacks 2 to nothing. We'll have more here in just a moment, 2 to nothing in favor of Cleveland. I got that crowd noise was really loud in here. This IFB, it was tough. She is the winner of a three-night giveaway at the Princess Resort Casino in Grand Island, Ohio, including airfare and accommodations, courtesy of Princess Vacations International. Never were all these girls. Big round of applause. They did a great job this evening. So did you. Once again, thank you for showing up this evening. I'm Dewey Stevens from 985 WNCX. Yes, Summary first, okay. and then the two goals. Okay. Scoring summary. Uh, Pat, how we look on camera? Does it look awkward? Or are we okay here? Okay. Nope. Yeah, it really is. Okay, no problem. Okay, that's fine. Keep the mics close. Okay, Dave Cannell. There's the hand. <laughs> uh, let's talk a little bit about. I was going to. Lumberjack Group Sales features super low discount rates. Visit one of the sales tables located in the east or west outer front We already did it. And it's good. It's good. You need to bring your team out to watch our team in action. Our call six. Nelson nine, six, and Gauthier. Nine, Nelson scored nine, the first yeah. one of the McKaylick drop pass. Lumberjacks are in action tomorrow night. That's Saturday, February 20th. Tomorrow night, 7:30 against the Indianapolis Lions. Everything okay? What well, makes a great movie even better is seeing it at one of the National Theater locations, which are scattered across Northeast Ohio. National Theater means makes your city the most popular in popcorn in town. So come laugh with us and cry with us at National Theater. For more than 25 years, Whistler 1350 has been playing the music you want to hear. Today's hottest country stars, 24.
Oilers a day, seven days a week. The Salt Lake Golden Eagles trail the Cleveland Lumberjacks two to nothing at Richfield Coliseum in the first ever meeting between the two teams. Welcome back. I'm Mike Barrick alongside Dave Herekesi. The Eagles uh, outplayed and outscored in the first period and a late controversial goal to give the Lumberjacks the two to nothing lead. Dave, the Eagles are down and we'll take a look at the scoring summary in the opening period. Todd Nelson scored first and Daniel Gauthier scored the second goal. McKaylick with a very nice pass, uh, no look pass as he throws it into the slot. As I mentioned, uh, McCulloch with a good pass. He jumps on a, a rebound behind the net. McCulloch one-timing it right between the legs of Sean Hafey. Here come Todd Nelson into the slot. One times it by a sprawling Trevor Kitten goal. And the Lumberjacks scored another goal later in the period, and that turned out to be the controversial goal, Dave. It was David Quinn who threw the pass across. Quinn had it at the left wing side, and then it right in front, Trevor Kidd was shaken up. The puck came in front of the goal for Gauthier, but Kidd went right down, and that's why Bob Francis was so upset. Jason Duberman just positioned to the left of uh, Trevor Kidd, just pulls his legs out from underneath him, and Gauthier just fires that puck in. Uh, Golden Eagles having a tough time so far capitalizing uh, Cleveland is on every opportunity and they've caused all kind of problems for the Golden Eagles. And the uh, Lumberjacks out shooting Salt Lake in the opening period and the Golden Eagles failing to score. Pop Francis said earlier this week the big problem for him in Kansas City was the fact that the Eagles were having problems getting it out of their own end. Right now the big problem is getting shots on Rob Dobson. Well, it all begins back in your own zone, and I believe that the Golden Eagles, to be successful, need to set up, take time, have some patience, start out from behind your net, come up with the three forwards, move the puck up along the boards. Don't take the puck into the middle of the ice. We, it's been evident tonight. We've seen it happen a couple times where the puck's been thrown right up the middle, and uh, Cleveland players jump right on that loose puck, take it right back at Trevor Kidd. It stops the momentum changes that the Golden Eagles are trying to set up. The Golden Eagles have to take it, and then when they get once they get inside the Cleveland zone, they have to set up, move the puck uh, into them, uh, back to the point, get the good shot, get a people in front of Dobson and goal, create the scheme, and then hopefully they get, can get a rebound and get the goal. Well, the coach, there you hear it, a two to nothing in favor of the Lumberjacks over the Salt Lake Golden Eagles, the first ever meeting between the two teams. We'll have more hockey here from Richfield, Salt Lake, and Cleveland in just a moment. Okay. Jeez. You are too uh, too much here. Okay, great. Uh, I don't have the promo up here, so uh, Jay just went downstairs to get me some water, so we'll be all right. Um, right there. Oh, here he is. I got the promo. Yeah. We'll be perfect. Uh, Jay, uh, th the key question I had is uh, awkwardness on us at, in that location. Are we all right? <laughs> sure? Okay. All right. It just feels awkward, so I just didn't know how it looked. Yes. Great. So that's that's fine. We, we went, it's pretty much the same format, right? <coughs> okay, great. From the Coliseum in Richfield, Ohio, it's uh, Cleveland Lumberjacks over the Salt Lake Golden Eagles by a score of 1-0 here in 
here, or two to nothing, I should say, at the end of uh, 20 minutes of play. All right, uh, we have some games in the IHL tonight, and Indianapolis uh, leading Cincinnati two to nothing. The Cyclones have really struggled this year. And Kalamazoo and Peoria just underway. Fort Wayne and Kansas City and San Diego winning last night. 5-2 in Phoenix, taking on the Roadrunners again. And how about the big story? Rick Knickel from the Gulls gets called up to the Los Angeles Kings and played his first game last night against Chicago. Uh, Rick Knickel having an outstanding year, the number one goaltender in the in IHL so far. And uh, he played uh, last night, stopped 46 shots uh, in that contest, though he got beaten 7-2. He played incredibly well. And we'll see how that affects San Diego as the season goes on. All right, uh, that's the story here. Uh, the Eagles are down 2 to nothing, And a look at the scores uh, in the International Hockey League. And here at Richfield Coliseum, the Lumberjacks, as mentioned, leading by two. All right, uh, the Eagles will take on the same Cleveland team next week at the Delta Center, Thursday and Friday nights. And next Thursday will be ticket exchange night. Redeem your unused tickets from the 92-93 season for a ticket to the game or purchase a full price $12 ticket and get a coupon for a free medium pizza from Domino's and a free movie rental at Movie Buffs. We'll also have the finalists from the Movie Buffs Honeymoon in Vegas Elvis Lookalike Contest and that will be judged during the intermission. And Dave, uh, are you going to uh, go down uh, to the intermission and down on the ice for that? That should be another fun promotion that we do here uh, at the Delta Center and uh, God, you're, you're going to do yourself up as Elvis, too. You wanted the late. <laughs> yeah, or well maybe the two of us will get down there. And uh, no Elvis lookalikes in the stands here tonight. And uh, they've drawn uh, fairly well here in Cleveland, much better than they did in Muskegon. They averaged uh, somewhat uh, over 2,000 per game there. And uh, the Lumberjacks uh, expect a crowd of 13,000 tomorrow night. They've averaged nearly 5,000 a game. And unfortunately, in a, bu a building like this, Dave, uh, sometimes a crowd like 5,000 here tonight doesn't look that big. But uh, they expect uh, some good things. And as mentioned, they'll have a brand new facility here in a couple of years. As you mentioned earlier in the broadcast, uh, Cleveland uh, noted for its tradition of, of winning hockey teams, nine Calder Cups uh, over a span of, of some 12 years. And now, uh, you know, the fans, they still come out and support these teams on a bitterly cold evening, may I say, outside. No question about it. We were down in Pittsburgh to watch the parent uh, Pittsburgh Penguins last night, Dave, and getting out of the car, it felt like your hometown of Winnipeg. I mentioned that uh, we got to the game just a little bit after 7, and it was so cold, and we were trying to find those ticket windows, and it's been a 15 years since I was in the Civic Center in Pittsburgh, and trying to find a window to get the ticket, we were scampering along, but it was enjoyable to get back to see that team and talk with the president, uh, Craig Patrick, of the two-time uh, Stanley Cup champion Pittsburgh Penguins. Yeah, great relationship between the Penguins and the Lumberjacks. Uh, the Jacks have had great success in the IHL, and their parent team winning two consecutive Stanley Cups and looking for a third. And in fact, the, uh, the players had seven players from Muskegon uh, involved in last year's Stanley Cup championship with the, the Pittsburgh Penguins. But a beautiful facility here, Dave. And uh, you mentioned uh, playing here one game with the St. Louis Blues against the Cleveland Barons. And people may forget, but they did have NHL hockey here in Cleveland. They played right in the same building, the Coliseum. And for two years, the Cleveland Barons, they went from uh, California to the Golden Seals, here to Cleveland, and then they merged uh, with Minnesota and became the North Stars. They actually, the North Stars were already an established team, but they, they actually merged the players with Cleveland and Minnesota and moved there. George Gunn uh, was the owner of the franchise uh, in California at the time, and then he, he consummated both the Minnesota franchise and the Cleveland Baron franchise together. Then we had that uh, strange uh, dispersal of players a little later on, but uh, as I mentioned, I've said it, you know, that uh, Cleveland done a very fine job with their hockey franchises they've had here, and the people have come out to support them real well. Well, early on, uh, two to nothing in favor of the Lumberjacks, and Rob Dobson, who has a total of uh, two shutouts in his career against the Golden Eagles, both last year, and Dave, a very interesting story with Rob Dobson with the Hall of Famer Glenn Hall in the building, and uh, why don't you relay the story? Well, this morning uh, during the workout, the Golden Eagles were on the ice working out, and uh, I was up in the stands talking with Glenn Hall, and uh, Cleveland uh, goaltender uh, Dobson came up after they had finished their workout, and he brought up a brand-new goal stick. It hadn't been taped or hadn't been used in a felt marker, and he says, Sir, Mr. Hall, this would be great for uh, myself and my family if you could give me an autograph.